So a few weeks ago, I posted a video on the signs of emotional abuse. And I emphasized how it can have a devastating impact on a person's mental health and well-being. It often leaves one feeling powerless, alone, and miserable. Healing from emotional abuse can be a difficult and complex process, but it is possible. In this video, we will explore how to heal from emotional abuse, rebuild self-esteem, and reclaim one's sense of self-worth. You see, by learning how to identify and address the emotional scars left by abuse, survivors can begin to heal and move towards a happier and healthier future. First, let's understand the cycle of emotional abuse, okay? So the cycle of emotional abuse typically begins with the abuser gaining control and power over the victim. Now, this can happen in many ways, such as manipulation, coercion, or threats. So once the abuser has gained control, they may begin to engage in behaviors that are emotionally abusive. Now, over time, the victim may begin to feel trapped in the relationship and unable to escape. They may feel as though they have lost their sense of self and begin to doubt their own worth and value. Here, the abuser may continue to use manipulation and control to keep the victim in the relationship, even if they are unhappy or want to leave. Now, at some point, the cycle of emotional abuse may escalate, leading to a crisis point. This might involve a particularly severe incident of emotional abuse or the victim attempting to leave the relationship. Now, at this point, the abuser may become violent or engage in other dangerous behaviors such as stalking, harassment, etc. Anyway, after a crisis point, the cycle of emotional abuse may begin again with the abuser regaining control, this is a cycle, and power over the victim. This cycle can be difficult to break and victims of emotional abuse may find it challenging to leave the relationship or even seek help. Here are 10 steps you can apply to heal from emotional abuse. When a person is ready to begin healing from the abuse that they experience from their abuser, there are a number of key steps they can take to help make the process as productive as possible. So here is a step-by-step -step look at how one can begin to heal from emotional abuse. Number one, acknowledge the issue. The first step towards healing from emotional abuse is to acknowledge that it happened. Stop being delusional. Now, I know this can be difficult, especially if you have been in denial or if the abuse was subtle. You know, we talked about it. It is important to recognize that emotional abuse can be just as damaging as physical abuse and it can leave long-lasting mental scars. Number two, seek support. Having a support system can be critical in healing from emotional abuse. Please reach out to a trusted friend, a family member, or seek help of a therapist. Talking about your experiences and feelings with someone who listens and validates your emotions can be incredibly helpful. Number three, please practice self-care. Okay, self-care is a key component of healing from emotional abuse. Take time to care for yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. Be sure to, number one, please get enough sleep. Eat a balanced diet. Engage in regular exercise. And practice relaxation techniques like meditation or yoga. Please do things that bring you joy and make you feel good. Number four, learn to identify the triggers. Emotional abuse can create triggers that cause intense emotions or memories. It's important to identify these triggers to avoid being re-traumatized. Please pay attention to your thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations when triggered. And take note of what triggers you. Once you identify your triggers, now you can determine how to cope with them. Number five, please develop coping skills. Developing coping skills is crucial to healing from emotional abuse. Now, these are tools and techniques that help you manage difficult emotions and situations. And they can include deep breathing exercises, visualization techniques, journaling, therapy, etc. Number six, please practice self-compassion. Self-compassion involves treating yourself with kindness and understanding, especially during challenging times, okay? Treat yourself the way you would treat a good friend who is going through a difficult time. Another one, 
please set boundaries okay setting boundaries means setting limits and saying no to things that don't align with your values needs or desires moving forward for example you might say no to activities that involve your abuser or that would put you in a situation where you may be re-victimized this can help rebuild a sense of control and self-respect number eight please process your emotions Emotional abuse can create intense emotions such as anger, fear, sadness, and it's very important to process these emotions and not suppress them. Many of you like to run away from pain, and I'm always telling you, pain demands to be felt. Feel it, just don't let it consume you. So engage in activities like therapy, journaling, talk to a trusted friend. All these things can help you get through the abuse in a healthy way. Number nine, please forgive but do not forget forgiveness is a personal decision and it's not necessary to forgive the abuser to heal from the emotional abuse however forgiveness can be a part of healing you know that healing process for some individuals forgiveness can help and this often involves letting go of the anger and the resentment towards the abuser but it does not mean that you forget the abuse or excuse the abuser's behavior Number 10, please focus on the present, okay? Focusing on the present is important when healing from emotional abuse. Live in the now, refrain from dwelling too much on the past, and avoid worrying about the future. Mindfulness techniques such as meditation or deep breathing can help you put your focus on the present moment. By following these steps, you can start your healing journey and work towards getting into a healthier headspace. And by doing so, you can also move on with your life in an easier and healthier way. Now, I know these things are easier said than done because some of these abusers are, you know, we have to cooperate with them. We have kids together. We've built a lifetime with them. But if you want to heal, like I mentioned earlier, you are going to have to set boundaries that can still work whether you are co-parenting or not. Again, turn on your notification button. I'm going to be bringing in more videos that are going to help you work on healing and being a better person individually, as a parent, or as a partner. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.